I mean, I think that the age of our protagonist, the age at which you, uh, adolescence is a time when you really have to develop your own kind of identity in opposition sometimes to not just your family, but the community that you've kind of, that has supported you and has given you your original belief systems as a child. And adulthood, which starts in adolescence, is all about really finding out whether those ideas correspond to your own ideas. And I think sometimes people find out that actually radically they really don't. Um, and part of what you have to do as an adult is separate yourself from that a little bit. So I think it's really important just to the protagonist and also to that time of life. Right, I think it's a lot about growing up, like you said, but one thing I was interested in exploring in particular is uh, how different people in your family react when you separate, you know, sometimes with anger, sometimes with acceptance, and, um, and then what happens after you leave your family, do you? still love and support them or do you divide yourself completely from them and um, I think in certain ways both of our books address that kind of thing. So. Well I, at least with Triss I think um, she's sort of dealing with a lot of things that I deal with um, in that she's trying very hard to overcome fear and so if she becomes stronger I think it's um, partly a reflection of ways I've become stronger and partly because of things I would like to do, ways I would like to become stronger. And so I guess I didn't realize when I was writing it that she was a lot like me or that her struggles would sort of bleed into my life or that my life would bleed into hers, but it just happens that way. I think it's really important to me in general to, to create an emotional arc for my characters that is um, a parallel to or projection of kind of an emotional arc that I still need to go on or have gone on or am in the middle of. Um, that's kind of part of the main purpose of why I write. Um, it's, it's also to help myself learn things. Um, and I think that for in Lena's case, you know, uh, although she's very different from me in many ways, um, I'm not shy, I'm not uh, particularly obedient. <laughs> um, but uh, she, you know, there's a lot of the insecurity she does feel to start, this kind of sense of being frayed or damaged in some way deep down, um, which was definitely my, my experience for a long time. And, and I think that part of uh, part of the what I still struggle towards and have to some extent become better better at is is journeying past that sense and kind of outgrowing that sense that there's something wrong with you at base and there's something corrupt um, that makes you unlovable. And I think my character in my first book had that too. And sort of to growing towards that place of acceptance and love of self and strength is is you know a really important journey for my characters because that's a really important journey for myself always in life um, to get closer and closer to that. Well, I, I didn't make this up and now I quote it all the time, and, but I don't remember who did, but somebody, one of my writer friends, because I live in Brooklyn and like everybody I know is a writer, but said something like, well, you know, high school is like dystopia, which I think is accurate, but I also think that you know, uh, that we are we are set, transmitted messages a lot of times nowadays in the media in general by our parents, by our culture, that there's, that like we're on the brink of collapse and that the world is very scary and dangerous now. And I think that dystopian allows that. Dystopian fiction channels those fears and transforms them because the protagonist, you're still, you're still showing somebody who's able to overcome these tremendous odds in a very uh, dis destroyed society. Um, so it's actually, I don't think it's an escape so much as, you know, a reflection back of our world while, while again, making it manageable, subverting, subverting the sense of powerlessness. And I think it also goes back to um, well, something I learned in college, which is that a good story um, makes you curious about what came before and about what comes after, and dystopian fiction is kind of perfect for that because um, you, you see the world as it is and you see it as it could be and you wonder how it got there, but you're also paying attention to the forward motion of the narrative, so that's part of it. But I also think there's something really interesting, especially in, um, I don't know, when kids are having a hard time and reading about um, reading in a dystopian book, most of the characters are either weak and they become strong or they're strong or they're somehow worth writing about in this damaged and broken world. And when you are feeling damaged and broken yourself, you like to see that empowerment. Well, 
<laughs> I somehow convinced myself that Canada was not another country, that it was just like the US, but then when I arrived and the signs were half in English and half in French, um, and people were actually really nice to me, I realized I was in another country. Um, and so it's been really great, but I've had to turn off my abruptness, which is to get up to a counter and say, my name's Veronica and I'm doing this, you know, because I'm used to just people trying to get me through a line really fast. But here they're like, how are you? How can we help you? Um, so to make a long rambling story short, <laughs> it's actually really great because um, everybody's very sweet and um, very enthusiastic about the books um, that we wrote and, you know, what we're doing. I have to say, you know, touring is kind of, can be a double-edged sword because obviously it's always a miracle that people are supporting your books that much, but it can be exhausting and you don't get time to sleep and you don't get time to eat. But I am sitting in a beautiful room in front of a tray of macarons that I will eat as soon <laughs> as I stop filming this. So the Canadian tour is just like, it's fancy, it's fun, I'm loving it. Um, it's great to be here with the rising superstar, Veronica Roth, and it's just, it's really great to meet so many wonderful, enthusiastic fans. And, but like more importantly, it's really great to eat all this chocolate. <sighs>